Kaji Salidi Ha, a multiple award winning and celebrated stand up comedian, actor, writer, and film director. He is the creator of the pioneering South African comedy sketch show known as the Pure Monati Show and helmed many original formats which have become hit television series in South Africa. He is uh, one of the luminary speakers on the program for the Design Indaba 2019, and he joins us in studio to tell us more. Kaji, so welcome back to Morning Live. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you have a residency. Here I now. love it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> it's I'm, I'm very great. tempted to spin in the chair, by the way. So <laughs> but yeah, you have to be. <laughs> I just want making everybody nervous. No, please, yeah. I mean. Yeah, you're making Braemos on camera. Bra Amos, one, very can nervous. I just have one spin, please? Just a little, <laughs> hey. It's the young. There we go. Well, you're one of the 30 speakers who will be um, on the program at this year's Design in Daba. Uh, bring us into what it is that you'll be speaking about and what will be at the core of your message. I, I, I mean, I'm a, a storyteller. I think that's why they call, called me. I mean, I'm a creative as a storyteller. And um, what I wanted to, cause I don't know, I guess because of our, of our history as South Africa, we've got like a, a, a low self-esteem and we've kind of not wanted, when it came, you know, when it came to our culture and kind of exporting it to the world, we kind of, you know, when, if, when foreigners come to South Africa, remember the World Cup, and then people would get, would there be crime stories, and then South Africans would first ask, was it a local or was it a foreigner, you know? <laughs> and then if it was, a, if it was a, a, a local, they'd have a relief because it was like, we're less important than foreigners. And even when, when foreigners come to visit South Africa, we always very kind of like, how do you like it? Is it, you know, does it meet your standards? Are, you, are we good enough, you know? So, so and I'm, through my storytelling, I've, I've found being a stand-up comedian, traveling, and even making movies, I found that the more local, the more kind of cel we celebrate our thing, the, the more it's accepted all over the world. So I, I think my, I'm going to touch a lot on that, the kind of hyper-locality of a thing and, and making it, that, that making it the most global thing. Like we watch, like, we know that Jay-Z and Biggie Smalls are from Bed Star, you know, but we don't know really if, like, Bugalav is from Deep Kloof or where, where, where's Black Coffee from? You know, where's Trevor Noah from in that way? And what is the culture of that place? And, and that's like fascinating. I'm pretty sure you've had plenty of time over the years to sort of reflect on your journey and where you started. Uh, are, I mean, motivational talks are great, but are there some things that when you sit and you think, think, I wish I'd known that because it would have made my journey easier? Yeah. Uh, or it would have made me, my navigation through this tough industry much easier. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's life, right? I mean, I sometimes just wish I had, like, this brain in high school. Then, I mean, I wouldn't have such a tough time <laughs> with the ladies, right? Because I would be such a wife. They'd just be like, who is this guy? But, <laughs> you know, it, it is life. So, and I guess, like, even now, there's so many things that I don't know. That if I live long enough, uh, you know, what, by the time I'm 80, I'm going to be like, damn it. I wish I had those legs and those good looks of that 40-year-old. <laughs> How important is, is timing? In, in, in this journey, uh, especially for you as, as a storyteller. I mean, you mentioned about how South Africans have uh, historically had a low self-esteem, but, but that's taken time to sort of, um, for us to, you know, get to a place where we're able to celebrate our own. We look at artists such as Shoma Josie. We're making she's our own great. films. Was yeah. Shoma Josie? <laughs> yeah, she's awesome. So how important is, is, is timing in, in, in the arts? I think it's everything. I mean, it's one of those esoteric things that what is it? Because you know, one person can work really, really hard forever and kind of not really get anywhere. And then somebody might come that week, you know, where the guy's like, I'm giving up this week. And then the other guy's just been doing it for a week. And then the universe kind of conspires to be, to say this is your time, you know? So I, I don't know. It's like luck. I guess it's what well, if you like, you just have to choose something that you really believe in and then do it. And hopefully it works. It, it that and the time of it kind of come across but some there's so many great creatives that are never we're never going to know about we might know about when they die or whatever but you know timing is everything
Let's talk about uh, Catching Feelings. Just your thoughts now that it's obviously been on Netflix, it was in the cinema, you've had um, short time to sit and reflect on um, just how that journey unfolded and the, the end result uh, for, for you. Are, are you satisfied? Dope. Can we say dope <laughs> on TV? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it was, because uh, when I wrote the film, I, for me it was supposed to be like a, a shop window for like me as a filmmaker. And uh, I kind of get into fashion festivals you know film festivals and then take it from there and then it got into like it got into the LA film festival but you know I had like in my head this is my first film obviously it'll get into Cannes it'll be like an Oscar winner and then it, it doesn't really kind of work out like that and I was a little bit disappointed and then Netflix picked it up and it was the first sort of South African Netflix or African Netflix original and uh it got like so much traction, like millions of people. So, so the thing that I really, really wanted didn't happen the way I thought it would. So there's also that, you know, because then I like, I, you know, subsequently then I'm doing more work with Netflix because that kind of showed our story. And it was also so specific because people watched that film and I used, I, I would watch on Twitter and people from all over the world saying Joburg is now my, on my bucket list as a place to visit, you know. And it's, it's, I think it's also that showed this cool African city. I mean, I wrote it with Joburg as a character and it, it, was, it, it came through and I think it was appreciated by a global audience. Ah, definitely. And now on the latest project, Matuetue, that premiered yesterday. Briefly tell us about it. And uh, I, I want us to talk also a bit later on about the marketing um, aspect of it when it comes to um, creating these films and having films out there on screen. But the premiere, oh, Black on. Coffee is Why working on Why do you have a picture of me with John Rob? It's very confusing. I'm like, what are we... It might confuse the audience. <laughs> There's a picture of me with John Robbie. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, the Amber. So, so, so sorry, repeat your question. I'm just, it was just distracting. My I'm like, where's my alarm? My daughter premiered um, yesterday. Yeah. Black Coffee is involved in the film. Yeah. Um, briefly bring us into what this particular story is all about. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a coming of age story. It's, a, it's about these two friends. It's a, it's a story about friendship. But I came up with it when I was first in university. I was at UCT, like, I don't know, decades ago. And uh, I discovered weed when I was there. And I was, you know, when sometimes when you're young, I was young and impressionable. And the kind of weed kind of was like, for me, it was like, whoa, this is the secret to life, you know. So, so I wrote this story, which is a coming of age story about these two guys that are growing this weed on a hill in the township of Atridgeville. And then obviously it's a thing that they're going to sell so that they can get to university. That was the basic story, which is of... The, of, the, of, you know, the story I have in this film now. And then the, the police come and then they have to basically just destroy this weed because otherwise they're going to go to jail and not <laughs> see their dream. So they burn the weed and then the smoke of the weed goes into the neighborhood, you know, getting all the grandmothers and everybody high. And then there's this <laughs> cathartic experience for this neighborhood. That was the, <laughs> You know that, that thing idea. we said about timing? Yeah. And Woma Tueto just waited till 2018. I think they would have been kind of all right. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> Yeah, and then, and then so yeah, then what happened was that that two years ago I found that piece of paper that I'd written this thing in, All right. and then wanted to make that movie. Okay, that's where we'll have to leave it. Are they kicking us out? Uh, yes, they are kicking us out. Designing Dava Festival <laughs> is an annual celebration of design and creativity. It showcases the most relevant talents across the creative sectors. One of the speakers on the lineup for this year is actor, writer, and film director Gachi Solidi.